Well, how's the uh, preseason going so far? Have you had good battles for starting positions or uh, have you not had good battles? I mean, how, how, how would you say the competition has been out there on the field? Uh, I think it's, I think it's been great. Um, I think there's still a couple of positions kind of up in there. We're still working through a few things, which uh, I think is a, a good thing because we've had some guys step up. So, uh, yeah, things are going well. Been a good camp, you know, kind of focusing on, just started focusing on Delaware exclusively the last day or two and then tr really trying to work it to get ourselves in game shape. Uh, so, but it's been been very productive. Well, what, what, I mean, I imagine Kip Franklin is not a guy who's, battling for his position. Can you tell us maybe what positions are still up for grabs? Yeah, Kip, uh, Kip's a solid right tackle. I think right now, Jamie Romo and Sam Glover, you know, two guys that played quite a bit last year are still battling for the left tackle spot. Obviously expect, you know, both to play. Um, Josh Pena is, you know, kind of locked up one of the guard spots. And then, uh, you know, we're trying to figure out because we got some good players. Um, David Hickson's obviously doing a good job for us at center. Has been there. We've got Lirion Mertese, who's coming off an injury, who's played a lot of guard, played a little bit of center, trying to figure out kind of what the best spot for for him is. And then um, Ahmad Bradley's doing a really nice job for us at left guard as well. So trying to figure out who's the, the other guard and then trying to figure out exactly who the center is. I think we got a pretty good idea who it is, but I think we're just still kind of ironing some things out this last week or so. Would it be a case where Hickson starts in certain form? Like, you know, usually you want a bigger guy when you go ahead, it's an odd front like Air Force. Could it be maybe that you use Mertese at center in certain situations? I think it, that's that's a possibility. We've certainly done those things before. Um, you know, it's center is the one that's a little different. You know, don't, don't like to change centers quite as much because – it's a different guy snapping the football, and you don't want to mess up the quarterback center exchanges and things like that. Um, so hopefully we'll we'll kind of settle on it. Um, my probably my thought right now is Hickson at center, and then working out Mertese and Bradley at guard, and figure out you know who's going to play on the other side of Josh Pena. Coach, I want to go into a little detail on Mertese. Just as a football player, what you see out of him? Well, obviously he's a really big kid. Um, he has has some talent. Uh, he's tough. He's smart. Um, wants to do well. So he's got all the attributes we're looking for to be a really good player. Now, you know, he's working back from a season ending knee injury last season. Um, and he's fully cleared, but he's still working his, you know, kind of working his way back into kind of football shape and, and those sort of things. But I think he has a chance to be a really good football player for us. Um, you know, whether he's the day one starter, whether he comes in on the second series or something like that, he's going to, he's going to be a big time contributor for us. I would think he'll start quite a few games this year. Um, but he's doing a, a good job and we have, you know, really high expectations for his play this year. Um, could you go back a little just to his recruitment what do you remember out of him and uh, meeting him a few years ago? Yeah, he's, uh, you know, from the time you meet him, great personality. Uh, he's a fun guy to be around, but what, what you notice is, is um, you know, even off his high school film, how strong he was, um, you know, there's tenacity, the way he played the game. Um, you know, he, he, he loves the game of football. He wants to do well. He's a great teammate. Um, and all those things were, you know, kind of evident the first time I, I watched him play on film. And then, you know, the first time I had an opportunity to meet him and his family. Uh, he's had a um, unique life journey to get to this point in Annapolis. Just um, hearing his story, just uh, what type of impact has that had on you? Oh, I think it's cool. I think um, I think it's a, obviously it's kind of an American dream. You know, he, he comes here and they fled, I think, Civil War back home in a war-torn war country and uh, made their way to Pittsburgh. And uh, for him to do that uh, and then, you know, become an American citizen to, to make his way to the Naval Academy, I think that's a, I think it's a great story. Um, yeah, it, and he's got a great family too. They're just, you know, great people, very appreciative, uh, of the opportunity they have here in the, in the States and very appreciative of the opportunity that Lirion here has at the Academy. So, uh, great young man, great family, great story, uh, kind of the American dream. If you ask me. Thank you. Scott Wyckoff. Coach, does this moving parts that you have right now, 
10 days out from the opener. Does that speak to the potential for the depth that you have on the offensive line this year? Uh, I certainly hope so. I guess we're going to find out it either speaks to our depth or it speaks to <laughs> we're scrambling. So it's one of the two, but I think so. Cause I think there's quite a few guys that are going to have the opportunity to play. So, you know, I mentioned three, three tackles that are kind of vying for a starting job, but you know, we've got another tackle, Joe Petty, that's a senior that's been around for a long time. We've got uh, two sophomores, Connor McMahon and, and Javon Bouton. Uh, Javon Bouton has really, really had a great camp. He's really stepped up. You know, I could see those guys working their way into the play and rotation this year as well. So there's depth there. Um, you know, Josh Pena, Ahmad Bradley, Lirion Mertese, those three pretty good guards. Uh, we've got some other young guys, uh, Sean Harris. We've got Brandon Moore, who's a senior at guard. Uh, so we, we feel good about those guys. And then you've got at center, you know, uh, David Hickson, who we feel good about. We've got Lirion that can play center. We've got Brent Self, who we think has got a chance to be a good player. His brother, Justin, played for us a few years ago. Mike Petroff is a, another guy that we moved over from defense that is kind of in the mix there at center as well. So I think there are a lot of guys that have the potential to help us and to help us this fall. So I, I think there's some depth. Um, obviously, we want to settle on the first five first and then kind of go from there. But, yeah, we're, we're excited about the group. What does it mean for the offensive line to once again be represented with one of the captains like you have this year with Kip? Well, I, I think it, uh, I think it, it says a lot about what the rest of the team thinks about those guys. You know, it, it's not surprising that, you know, maybe other old linemen would vote for an offensive lineman to be a, be a captain. You know, Kip is kind of the leader of our position group in the room. Uh, but, but to get his teammates to vote for him and, I think that says a lot. So I think it's good. I hopefully um, we try to we try to sell that to our guy. We're guys. We're kind of unsung heroes in a lot of ways, but we're kind of the heart and soul of the football team. And uh, our team and our offense will go. And in my opinion, as the offensive line goes, because I think we've got great skill this year. I think we've got a quarterback with experience. Um, so we're kind of feel like we're the heart and soul of the team and. Uh, the fact that the team recognizes that, uh, I think, is pretty cool. Now, with the focus on Delaware, what's impressed you about their front and, and what do they show? Well, I mean, if you just look at the depth chart and you look at um, you look at the age of those guys, they are very experienced. Uh, I think there are nine graduate or fifth year or sixth year seniors playing for Delaware on their defense. Um, and obviously they, they didn't have as good a fall this past fall, but in the spring season, I think they were seven and one, uh, but they are big, they're talented. It's a, obviously a great program with a lot of history, a lot of tradition. So, you know, we expect a, a really good football team to, to roll into Annapolis here next Saturday. Thanks. Back to me. Yeah, Wags, I'm sorry, you're up. Well, who, who would be the swing guy at tackle? I, I guess you're sorting that out, but normally you like a guy that can go left or right. And I mean, some people are not comfortable doing that. Uh, do you have one guy that you feel comfortable going left or right and backing up Kip when Kip needs a blow? Yeah, uh, probably Sam Glover. You know, Jamie has played more on the left side, Jamie Romo, and Kip's played more on the right side. Uh, Sam Glover would be the guy that probably could play either side. But uh, all those guys, because we do a lot of unbalanced line stuff, both, you know, all of those tackles have to play on both sides of the ball. So uh, I think Glover would be the guy, if Kip were, all, you know, out of the game to start with, that would play over on the right side. Um, but, you know, all those guys certainly should be capable of doing that if, if, you know, we get to a situation where we need to do that. Romo's a local kid who, uh, you know, last year with all the injuries, he, you know, hadn't played much at all in his career, and then he was, you know, became a starter and performed fairly well. What can you say about Jamie and how he's coming along as a senior? He is a great young man, uh, loves our program, loves this institution, uh, knows our offense, is dedicated, very smart, uh, good athlete. He, he's done great things here, and I think he's going to have a really good senior year. He's, he's kind of everything you're looking for in a you know, Naval Academy football player. If you could pick one guy on the line who's really 
brings a nasty attitude of, you know, kind of a real, the tough guy, the, the maybe the thorny type guy, who would he be? I, well, I think the guy this, you know, over time, Kip has done that, you know, he's had some injuries, so he's missed a little bit of, uh, or we've held him out of some things this fall camp. Uh, I think Josh Pena is the guy so far this, this fall camp that's really, um, he's just been out there. He gets in the huddle. He's had a great camp. He knows what to do. He's a tough guy. He's a good football player. Started quite a bit for us last year, uh, but we're, we're excited about him, and uh, he's had a great camp. So I would, I would guess Josh would be the guy that would kind of be that guy right now. I think there's some other guys have that potential. We just got to see it, you know, maybe a little more as some of them. You know, Ahmad Bradley has that kind of – he's had some flashes of, I mean, being really, really dynamic on the offensive line this – Ball camp. We just need more consistency and we need to get him out there and see if he can do it when he counts. And what can you tell us about Hickson? I mean, I, first of all, I, have you, uh, I, I was going to do some research. I don't remember the last time a sophomore started at center. Um, I'm sure it's happened, but I can't remember. Um, any concerns with the, such a young guy? He's got to snap the ball to the quarterback. And I mean, it's a, it's a tough responsibility being the center. Yeah, it is. Uh, we've had some guys, um, I'm, I'm like you. I, I, yeah, Ford. Ford was playing tackle as as a sophomore, though. That's he was right. Not at center. Uh, I'm sure Brady Demel. That's been a long time ago, though. And there may have been a, some a guy or two um, prior to that. Uh, Tanner Tanner Fleming, I think, started as a sophomore. But yeah, he's gonna he's gonna get out there maybe a little earlier than um, you know you'd like. Uh, just from the standpoint, you'd like a little more experience. But talent wise and mentality wise and Skill set wise, there, there's uh, he can he can do the job, uh, and he has essentially gotten every rep or just about every rep with the first team throughout spring ball and throughout fall camp. So he's got a lot of opportunities, a lot of reps, and uh, I'm sure he'll kind of be wide eyed, you know, Saturday morning. But I think once he gets out there, I think he's going to do really well. Bill Bergman. Coach, uh, Joseph Petty, 6'6", 293, is a big guy. Uh, what have you seen out of him? You know, he's a, he's a senior, and uh, he went to the prep school, so he's in his fifth year in our, our program. Uh, we don't have guys that are that size very often, uh, but he has just worked, 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 uh, and I couldn't be more pleased that from where he you know, started and where he is today, and it's, it's basically can be attributed to his work ethic, uh, his desire to play, uh, and I think he's going to play for us this year. He's on some special teams. He'll he'll get out there for us. I think it, before the season's over, he'll play some tackle for us. But uh, I'm just uh, really happy for him that he's put himself in this position, and he's done it, you know, through hard work and perseverance and keeping his head down. Um, so super excited about him. And uh, I think when he gets his opportunity, I think he's going to do really well. But he is a big boy. He's a big boy that can move around. Thank you. Scott Wyckoff. Coach, we know what you've said about Sam Glover's play on the field and in practice and in camp. What does that mean for you in recruiting when you've got a player like that at that offensive line position who comes from the state of Ohio where a lot of linemen come from across the country? Uh, I think it, uh, I think it man, bodes well for us. You know, we've got a few guys uh, that we're recruiting now from the Midwest. Um, I think some of those will probably eventually work out for us. But, yeah, Sam's a great young man from Columbus, a great mom, great family. Uh, and he has, uh, you know, played quite a bit for us last year. He's going to have a, a larger role this year. Uh, so I think it's great. Um, now, we recruit all over the country, and we, we've got guys, if, if I ran through this list, from the, the southeast and the Midwest and from Texas and – Arizona. Uh, we've got guys from California. So we're going to be all over the country recruiting. And, um, but uh, yeah, I think it's great that we've got a, a guy, you know, from Columbus, Ohio doing so well for us. And what have the battles been like when the ones have gone against the ones live in the fall camp? Uh, I, you know, we've, we've had our moments and they certainly have had their moments. Um, you know, usually in fall camp, you know, things favor the defense a little bit, you know, cause they're, you know, we're still installing and we're, working on new things and they, they are as well, but um, yeah, it's, it's been good. It's been competitive. The big thing is we've been, been able to get a lot of good work together. You know, we've been competitive, but we've for the most part kept each other healthy. Uh, so guys, 
you know, that's kind of the point of emphasis is we are on the same football team during fall camp, and we want to make sure when we play Delaware, we're at full strength, and we've gotten good work. Uh, they've won some battles. We want some battles, and hopefully that's going to help us, uh, you know, with the speed of the game and things like that when we play Delaware next Saturday. And finally, what do you want to see in these next few days from your line in the lead-up to the opener against Delaware? Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing is just uh, we're, we're working on getting ourselves in game shape and really pushing ourselves. So I think that's a key. And then just more consistency. You know, in, in practice, you can make some mistakes, but in the game, obviously, all those things are magnified. Uh, so people we can depend on, more consistency. Uh, you know, with some of these guys are young guys, as we've talked about with like David Hickson, is, you know, starting to learn the details of your assignment, not just knowing what to do, but kind of knowing how to do it, how to execute to block, uh, you know, foot placement, hand placement, uh, body positioning, all those sort of things. So just kind of nuances of the positions as well. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thanks, Scott. Hey, uh, Ashley, um, Lirion Matezi, I mean, he's a guy that got in there last year and did well until he got hurt. Um, what can you tell us about him? Because I feel like he's a guy that has a lot of talent. We've been talking about him for a couple of years as a guy that you thought could be an impact type of lineman. Um, a, is he healthy and how's he looking? He, uh, he's looking good. He was uh, just finally cleared, you know, within the last week, like fully cleared. So, He's been practicing. He was able to work out this summer. Obviously, been doing rehab and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. So, I think the big thing right now is just kind of getting him back into football shape. Uh, so we've got him full go now. Uh, he's doing well, and I still think he has all that potential that we we talked about. Uh, he's a big kid that's athletic, uh, can move. He's strong. Um, you know, he's got to work himself back into football shape a little bit, but. It's kind of be expected from a guy that you know, had a season-ending injury last year. And lastly, for me, I mean, obviously, with the 12 different starting line combinations last year, we obviously you hope that doesn't happen again. But do you like the depth you have if you do have a guy go down at a particular position? Do you feel you got the kind of depth? I mean, last year you survived, so yep. you had pretty good depth last season. Are you in that in a good spot there as well? Uh, I, well, I, I hope we don't have that problem again. Uh, hopefully we can, you know, Kip can start every game and, you know, and Hickson and Pena and Romo, you know, hopefully these guys that we want to throw out there can, can make it the whole way. But I think maybe we have more depth uh, this year, more guys that are going to be available to us. And certainly we're going to have more depth if we can hang on, you know, for a few weeks. You know, as the season progresses, there's some of these other guys like Javon Bouton, Connor McMahon, uh, they're going to be able to, to come on for us and be able to help us without a doubt. Well, Larry, I'm glad to have you with us. Um, last year was a challenging year for the Navy offensive line with all the injuries. And the, we talked at length about the 12 different starting combinations. You know, how was that for morale? And, you know, ultimately, I guess it was positive because the line got the job done at the, in the end against Army, despite all of the changes and uh, showed that there was some depth and guys stepped up. Um, kind of tell me, you know, how that was last year and how it may benefit the Navy offensive line this year. Uh, I mean, definitely it was huge. Uh, so we had a lot of different uh, lineups, as mentioned. And then I think the biggest part about the whole uh, the whole deal with that was that we had a lot of young guys get in. So uh, personally speaking, just my class, like the juniors now, we all we all played in the game last year. Uh, every single one of us. Uh, and then I think that became a huge deal this year because we all have that experience from last year. So I think we're going to benefit from that a lot this year. Can you talk about the challenge of, of cross training at two positions? Obviously, you know, it looks like you may play center and guard a little bit this year, but, uh, you know, obviously you're having to, you know, work and practice at two positions it's not easy to learn two positions or are, are the center and guard similar enough that you can do it uh yes sir so i mean i think it's pretty similar you know uh center could uh doesn't come easy but i mean i've been doing this since naps so i've been snapping and even last year uh i always you know pre-practice always get my snaps in so i've always done it uh and then last year i had to get in at notre dame game uh, second half we had our center go down, so I got that experience, which was huge. 
And then, you know, this year I played guard all last year besides that Notre Dame game in the second half. But, I mean, I don't think it's too big of a difference. Uh, I'm fine with wherever I'm put at. So. so, obviously, that 2019 offensive line really set the standard. There was five very talented guys that meshed well together, had great chemistry, and they all posted every game. That was, you know, unlike last year, there were no injuries, and they all started every game, if I'm correct. Um, but I'm sure you guys watch film of that line because they perform very well together. What, you know, talk about trying to reach that type of standard. So, I mean, definitely, as you mentioned, they, uh, they were the same five dudes that started every single game. And uh, I think we try that mentality. So the senior class this year, they were the last class to play with them. Uh, I was at naps when they were here. So, but I think Kip and the seniors, they try to, get all the good that that team did or that offensive line did and then uh, imply it with us. So, I mean, we definitely do look at a lot of film from the 2019 season. That was a, probably one of the greatest teams to come around here. So we definitely do uh, see what they did good and how we can improve upon our game by looking at uh, the old film. Scott Wyckoff. Lurian, what was it like for you growing up in Kosovo and, and what was the story behind your family moving from Kosovo and ending up in Western Pennsylvania? Yeah, so I actually had this talk with uh, Scott yesterday. So my background is my family, it was the 1990s uh, war with Kosovo and Serbia. So they first immigrated in the late 1990s. And then when they first immigrated, they came over to New Mexico. They're at a camp over here. And then once the war ended, they went back. And th during this time, this whole time, my mom was pregnant with me. So I ended up being born in Pristina, the capital of Kosovo. And then uh, my uh, dad, my brother, and my older sister, they came back here because a lot of my family uh, had come back. Like They came here, and then they went from, like, New York. But I had a majority of my family was in Pittsburgh, my cousins that did move. So that's when they came to, uh, here to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And then it took about five years for everything to go through for me to come here legally. So I had to go through a lot of paperwork that my family dealt with. And then I came here when I was five years old. What did you think of football once you arrived and started growing and, and decided that you wanted to play in what ended up being one of the hotbeds for high school football in the country in Western Pennsylvania? Yes, sir. So, I mean, growing up, I really didn't know much. Uh, I mean, I started playing football in seventh grade. So, I mean, elementary, a lot of my friends played football, but I still didn't really understand the game a lot. And then I was just I was just a big guy. So everyone's like, oh, come try out, come try out. So I started first in seventh grade. And then I would say about two years later, my freshman year in high school is when I really try, uh, started taking it serious. And then, you know, I really started to get a love for the game. What do you think when over the last six or eight months you hear all that's been going on in, in Ukraine and, and the civil strife that people, young people, like much like you were, have to go through what does that make you think about uh, having your family gone through something similar uh, I mean it's definitely hard because uh, I mean personally I didn't go through it but hearing the stories that like my brother my dad my mom they all had to go through another family like I had family members died during that war so just like go like hearing their stories and knowing that there's other families that are going through that it's definitely uh like heartbreaking and then you know I'm like kind of thankful that I'm here because hopefully like if it wasn't for America, my whole family would have been dead. Like we would have, I would not be here. So getting the opportunity to graduate from this place and then hopefully going on to help like America helped uh, Kosovo would be a great opportunity. Well, thanks a lot, Lirian, for coming to the United States and coming to the Naval Academy. Thank you. Bill Bergman. Lirian, I just want to get some background. So you said you moved here when you were five. Uh, so that, would that have been what, 2005 and you were born in 2000? No, 2006. I was born in 2001. Okay. And, uh, but your siblings were born in the United States, correct? No, my whole family was born over in Kosovo. So uh, they all immigrated in 1999, 2000s. Like that's when my whole family came over. And then, so they came here, the war ended, they went back. And then I was born over there, but I didn't have any type of like legal paperwork to come here. So my parents still had all the like documentation that they had gotten to originally go to America. And uh, you're a uh, U.S. citizen now. Um, when did you become a citizen? How was that process? 
Uh, yeah, so I became a naturalized citizen through my uh, dad. So since I believe it's if you're under the age of 18, once your parents become citizens, you become a naturalized citizen. So that's how I became a U.S. citizen. Um, and uh, what year did your dad become a citizen? Uh, Sorry to put you on the spot. No, you're all good. I want to say like late 2000s. I'm not positive. Probably like 2000. I have no clue. It's all good. Whatever um, I and uh, just lastly, why the Naval Academy? Uh, so as mentioned, you know, like coming out of high school, uh, I had a lot of those like smaller D1 schools. I had a couple of PWOs to other schools, but uh, the first school I came on a visit to was the Naval Academy. And uh, I really just like felt like home and like the whole story behind it, uh, especially the first time I walked in the stadium, we went down, I saw Kosovo on there, like really hit me. I was like, that's, that's wild. So, and then the more, you know, that was my sophomore year. So the more I got to learn about the school, the different opportunities, uh, and it just really felt like home from that point on. Thank you. Thank you. Wags. So, Larian, obviously you got in there for a few games last season and then it got cut short by your own injury. How frustrating was that? And then I, I, I presume – you sat out spring because you're probably recovering from a, a rehabbing from a surgery. Yeah. So yeah, unfortunately I tore my ACL ECU game and then uh, it was definitely hard, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's football, things like the, uh, things like this do happen. Uh, you know, it's all part of the game. You know, I think it was huge last year, just the, before like the three starts in those games, those last three games, I did end up getting, like rotating other games. So I think it was a huge experience for me just to be in those games, get a feel for what it's like, you know. And then uh, I did sit out for spring ball. Uh, I was still going through uh, rehab, but I was still able to do, I think the biggest thing for me this year was like a lot of uh, like seeing the game mentally. So just going through a lot of different like mental things as far as alignments and stuff that we're going to do was huge. And it was almost like a little like coaching opportunity just to try and help the young guys because uh, – by me helping them, like, I really got to understand the offense more. And how are you feeling now? Are you feel like you're 100%? And, you know, how excited are you for an opportunity to play a lot of games and really develop as a player? Uh, yes, sir. So I'm 100% back. Uh, I'm super excited. You know, it's it was hard watching all the guys practice. And, you know, I just had to sit there at times. But, you know, it just added fuel to everything. So I'm I'm 100% back now. I'm super excited for this year and uh, all the things that I'm going to get to do. Can you talk about Kip Franklin? Obviously, he's the leader of your group. He's the leader of the whole team, but in particular, the offensive line. He's the the veteran. He's the guy that played in every game last season. Um, you know, what can you talk about Kip as the bell cow of the offensive line, if you will? Yeah. So I mean, me and Kip go way back. So my first company here was 13. And he was uh, one of the older guys. So I've been with him since literally day one here. And uh, once we switched over last year to different companies, me and him again got the same company. He lives like four doors down from me, uh, him and Bijan. But yeah, I mean, he's a great leader, great guy. Uh, and then I really, like last year, I'd ask him for a lot of advice on different things, uh, especially football-wise. Uh, anytime I needed help with anything, you know, he just, his experience, as, as you mentioned, really helped the whole offensive line. And uh, he really just told us the ins and outs of the whole offensive line. Uh, Scott Wyckoff. Lorian, with all that your family's been through and other people in the country where you were born, like you mentioned before, what does it mean for you to run out in the field at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium and have Kosovo up on the wall there? Uh, it's huge. You know, it gives me the chills, honestly. Every time I walk through, I have many photos with uh, my brother and uh, other family right on that sign, right where Kosovo is, you know, being born there. I have a huge sense of pride from being there. You know, I take pride from being uh, from Kosovo, uh, but it's huge. You know, I have a lot of cousins and family back home who watch the games. And then, you know, the, I have different pictures posted with the Kosovo sign. So, I mean, it's a huge sense of pride that you no, know, I got family back home that looks up to me. I have little cousins, and uh, that's huge for me. Just it gives me a huge sense of pride. And what was it like once you decided you wanted to be a football player, growing up in Western Pennsylvania and playing in that type of environment? Yeah, so I mean, like I said, I, I started taking it seriously my uh, 
freshman year. So it was, it was hard at that time. Uh, some of the bigger schools we had central Catholic Pine Richland, a lot of really good schools in the, it was four a at the time before it got switched to five a and six a, but it was the football like atmosphere is huge over there. super competitive, which I think is good for all the guys that come out of the, the area, the Whoopi area, just cause you really learn to compete from a young age. I think, Having like we all came from like a little, I came personally like I had a little chip on my shoulder because we you know each year we got close or we go to playoffs we get out round one, so I think just learning to compete really helped me and then especially when I came here every day is a competition. Thanks. Thank you, Phil Bergman. Um, we're going quickly. What you love most about the sport of football? Uh, you know, just the life lessons it teaches you. Uh, so. I think about it a lot, actually, sometimes like, oh, what I want to do after here, what am I going to do when I'm done with football? But I think the football as a sport itself just teaches you a lot of important life lessons uh, for like, first off, just like teamwork, working with others. You know, it's 11 guys on the field at once and we're all just trying to work like one big unit. Uh, so I'd say like team management, uh, like time management as well, you know, especially being at the academy, we have a very busy schedule, but uh football teaches you how to deal with like I mean here we have a set schedule but then I think football just teaches you the importance of like making it to like meetings for example on time and all this other thing and uh, just lastly for me do you like right guard or left guard better uh doesn't really matter last year I played both mostly right guard but I'm comfortable playing wherever I need to be Josh Pena was a guy that got some time early on last season before he also got injured but I was asking Coach Ingram if there was one guy that really kind of had and played with a nasty attitude and brought up aggressive style, and he kind of singled out Pena. Uh, is that a guy that, you know, maybe you, you know, try to emulate a little bit? I know even though he's he's a classmate, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. So, I mean, definitely uh, just for – I mean, he's a very good player, a uh, very humble kid, super, like, amazing player. And uh, I think we have no other option but to be super aggressive and physical, especially at that guard position. Uh, we're going up against a bunch of big guys in the interior. I think you just have no choice but to be, like, a, a big, nasty dude in there. Well, speaking of big, I mean, and I know you're a big guy, but Ahmad Bradley, I was out of practice yesterday. He's, he's uh, quite the load, and Brandon Moore ain't far behind. What can you say about those two guys? Well, uh, you know – I would say interior wise, we're all pretty big dudes, uh, super athletic, big, super uh, athletic guys. And I think we're going to need that this year, especially playing the competition that we play. Uh, we need some bigger guys on the inside to move uh, some of those uh, D tackles that we play against. And last but not least for me, um, you know, people get concerned when they see a sophomore center didn't uh, really play much last season. It's an important position. He's snapping the ball to the quarterback every time. Uh, what can you say about Hickson and can he get the job done? Uh, definitely. Dave's uh, an amazing player. Uh, last year, he got to travel with us the, about the second half of the season. And then he got to practice with us all year. So he knows how it is. Uh, he knows the expectations we have. Uh, I think he'll be just fine. Uh, he's been doing awesome at practice. And uh, I think him having the experience of traveling with us last year and seeing how everything uh, goes, uh, I think he'll be just fine this year. Uh, Scott Wyckoff. I'm all set, Larry. Ann. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Phil Bergman. I'm good. Thank you. I've, I've got one. Being from Albania and then going to a football hotbed like the Pittsburgh area, when did your your family become football fans? Was it through you? And then how big of a football fans are they now with, with Navy football? Uh, definitely. So I'd say my brother was huge into football. Like he's the one that really got me into it. He used to watch it a lot growing up. Like, growing up, I watched it. I had no idea. Like, we didn't have football. Like, football does not exist back in Kosovo and Albania. So, when we say football, we think of soccer. Sure. So, but when I first got here, you know, my brother used to watch a lot of football, and that got me interested in uh, in the sport. And then once I started playing uh, my seventh grade year of high, uh, middle school and going on to high school, uh, I'd say a lot of my family really got more interested in the sport. You know, they come out and watch. Uh, they didn't really understand the game. But I think as time went on, they really did get interested, and now they understand a lot more of the game. How much do they love coming to games at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium and, and all the pomp and circumstance that comes with it? Love it. I mean, 
the atmosphere at Navy uh, Marine Corps State uh, Memorial Stadium is like none other, honestly. Uh, last year, my brother was at every single game, home and away, so he loves it. Uh, I had a lot of family come to the home games, uh, some to the away games, but I mean, it's like none other, so they love it. Albanian is your, your first language. Can you say go Navy, beat Army in Albanian? So yeah, it'd be Shka Navy, and uh, beat is like Muya Army, Army, but it just doesn't really make sense. But it's Shka Navy, Muya Army.